Welcome to the Jill on Money Show. It's Friday, November 11th. It's Veterans Day. I don't know. I don't think that most people get Veterans Day off, but it it is Veterans Day. So think about a veteran and thank a veteran. And that's an important thing to do. This is the program that takes the mystery out of your financial life. We do that by asking you to do a little work. You go to our website, jillonmoney.com. You click the contact us button. You ask your financial question. At the end of that form, there's a box and it says, would you be willing to come on the air live? If you click that box, you check that box, then guess what? Mark does everything else and you come on the air with us. And that's a lot more fun. You're going to see how much more fun right now because we've got Joanne who is on the line from Washington state. Hi, Joanne. How are you? Good. What's going on? Okay. My husband and I are just trying to figure out, we have this HELOC that's, we're retired. It's kind of hanging over our heads and trying to decide if we should pay it off, which would mean paying it off with our investment money or Mm -hmm. just continuing to make payments. Okay. Let's, let's hear a little bit more about you guys. How old are you, Joanne? We both have December birthdays. So in December, I'll be 63. He'll be 65. And you're both retired. And so um, how are you supporting yourselves? Um, We're supporting ourselves with our Washington State Retirement Association, not pension, but we have a defined benefit and defined contribution. So we're pulling money out of our defined contribution. And we were pulling money out of our IRAs and Vanguard. Okay. So the defined benefit is how much every month? 7,500 that comes comes into the bank, but that's everything. And we're also paying big time um, healthcare. Mm. Until my husband hits Medicare and then I hit Medicare. So that'll be in a month, thank God, next year. Yeah, and then we also, we have a little pension each at 65, so we're not pulling that yet. How much will that be? Um, his pension will be about 21276 Um My pension when I hit 65 will be 19000 Okay. So it's about forty grand a year, right? So in addition, so your defined benefit, and I'm just, I'm going to just pretend you're both 65 for a second. When you're both 65, you'll have $7,500 a month from your defined benefit plan. Plus from these pensions, you'll have something like $3,300 a month from those pensions, right? Right. And we don't, but we don't have to take the money from the defined benefit. We just are. Oh, I see. In other words, it is not like it has already started in terms of a, like an annuity or something. It's just like you're pulling the money out of there. How much is the, what's the lump sum in the defined benefit right now? Okay. In my DRS, I have about Mm 296,000 and my husband has about 456,000. Okay. Got it. And then your defined contribution plans. That's, oh, that's your defined contribution. Okay. So what's the defined benefit plans? Oh, oh, you see what we're going to get a month or year? Well, that's I'm just trying benefit. to under, I, I'm confused. You said you have a defined benefit plan and you're pulling $7,500 a month from that plan. That's that, from or, the numbers I just gave you. Oh, okay. I got you. And, and then, then we're what, have a pension at 65. Is all the money you have, the 296 and the 456? Um, we have 247000 in Roth IRAs and Vanguard. Okay. And so those are the pots of money that we're dealing with, right? 296, 456, and 247. Correct. Got it. Okay. And then the 40,000 at age 65 of your total pension, that's just a separate thing. And how about money in the bank? $55,000 sitting there for the for a little dream cabin, but that's like a dream down payment or a dream or a dream crusher. Dream fund, crusher, which yeah. Jill will be happy to gobble up. Okay. That's, that's okay. Um, so tell me about the house and the home equity line of credit. So what is the house worth? High 500s, like let's say 580. Okay. Let's say it. And you like the house. You want to stay in the house, right? Eh, it's okay. Yeah. I'll probably stay. I love that. Hold on a second. How much is the home equity line of credit? What's the balance outstanding? 37,928. That's it? Yeah. Oh, what are you making yourself so crazy for? What's the um? What's the what's the interest rate? Well, see, it, that's where it's making me crazy. It started out at three point two five, and now it's up to five point five percent. I hear you. That's uh, that's annoying. I get you. How much do you need to live on, you guys? What's your what's your monthly nut? 
Um, well, we're bringing in and basically spending it all on everything, vacations to everything is um, like 7500 Okay. That's the 7500 that you were pulling from the the two accounts, the 296 and the 456, right? Yes. Okay. And what about social security? Like when do you, when, when, what's the numbers on the social security benefit? Okay. I ran it like a th- thousand times and you figured out that I should take mine early. So I'm taking mine and trying to get that to be more of a, um, trying to put it into a savings account. So okay. I am getting uh, basically 16704 right now. Okay. And the husband is going to wait till he's 70. And he'll basically get thirty nine thousand. I know I asked this provocative question. Do you like your house? But like, do you really want to stay there? Because okay, so there's a few things. One is like, if you were said, I don't really want to stay in this house. Like, I'm done with it, and then I don't even care about the home equity line of credit because you'll sell the house and you'll pay it off. You know what I mean? So then I don't really care. If you were to sell it, where could you go, and what what would that mean? Yeah, well, you know, we got. We got the kid, the kid that pays attention to us. That's fun. She hasn't decided where she's going to live yet. She lives in Seattle right now, but she might move to somewhere cheaper than Seattle. Not necessarily because it's usually it's specific Northwest base and she, she likes all the cool mountain towns. So they're all expensive, Mm. but you know, it's a possibility. I mean, look, you don't have that much cash. I think you're spending a lot of money right now, given that you have three, you have, you know, you have. 750 grand in pre-tax retirement, right? When you pull that money out of that pre-tax account, that $7,500 a month that you're using, the problem is that you have to pay tax on it, right? Because it hasn't been taxed yet. So you're kind of like, it sounds to me like you're depleting those accounts pretty quickly. Now, hopefully, you know, you start to ease up on that, right? Because the 40 grand, you know, first your husband's pension, then your pension, that will give you $3,300 a month. And then and, healthcare yes. is 1500 total for each of us a month. So his will go away next year, yours won't. So, I mean, the, the situation should get progressively better in the next few years, right? Because and number one, the cost of, mel- of health care will go away. Number two, you'll get the pension. So that is like net positive. You'll have, that'll be such a big relief for you guys because now you'll have almost $5,000 a month extra. Okay, so that's all good. When that money comes in, they've got to reduce the amount that they're pulling out. That's the problem. That but like wh- you have to put, like if possible, it sounds like you're kind of living large right now, which is fine. I'm not going to tell you not to do that because that's what you're doing. I mean, I would hope that you could kind of, temper some of your spending a little bit because you're pulling a lot of money out of that $750,000 pre-tax pot. The the problem is not so much that you don't have a lot of money. It's that you have a lot of money and you're actually young. You're in your 60s, which means you could live for 30 more years. You know, if you were telling me you're 83 and 85, then and the same dollar amount, it's different because I don't have to have your money last for so long. And so the problem that I have with where you are is that it feels a little bit like you're spending too much money so early in your retirement. The question came in about the HELOC. It has almost like nothing to do with it. I wouldn't worry about the HELOC. I would wait to see what you do with your daughter. Because if you are going to sell the house, one really great thing that could happen is if you sold the house and you netted the money that you net after you pay off the HELOC and you, that you don't spend as much money on the next house or you rent for a little bit, and then you actually have some, hopefully you'll have a little more cash flow. That would be a big help for you guys right now because you could use a little free, you could have a little like cushion that would be very helpful for you guys. Very helpful. And I think that could happen if you sell your house. Even if she goes into a higher cost area, if you don't buy as big a house, you'll be okay. Can you do it? I think you can. I think so. You know, it's that whole, you know, you always hear these are your go-go years. and Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm going to just give you that. I want I I get that. You know, I, I really do. I don't want to make this um, a total Debbie Downer dream crusher moment. Mark, there is a dream crush coming, but because I do agree with you, like, but I think you have to do it with some care because it could be like, these are the go-go years, but then we leave ourselves with very anxiety-ridden older years. 
because you can enjoy yourself. You can have fun in your 60s. But if you live till you're 90, it could mean your 70s and 80s are very stressful. Here's a little bit of good news. Really? Both of those uh, pensions do have a th- up to 3% COLA. Okay. But that's like 40 Gs a year with 3% COLA, which is fine. But I'm talking about you could easily have a 10-year period where your $750,000 of pre-tax money drops down to like half a million, okay? I can, I can draw you a scenario and I can tell you like the horror stories of people who spend a lot of money early in their retirement only to find that they're 75 years old, very healthy, and quite worried about money. And I don't want you to be there. That's all I'm saying. So I'm not saying have no fun. You've saved. You do have almost a million bucks. You you have this asset called a house. It could be really helpful for you. All of those things are great. I just want you to understand that when your cash flow starts to change at both of your age 65 and those healthcare costs go down, you ha- cannot keep pulling as much money out of these plans. You really have to make a corresponding change. So the new money coming in, now you're going to be like, oh, great. I have this other source of income. I'm going to stop taking as much money from my savings and retirement accounts. That has to happen. Okay. That's all I'm suggesting. And if you sell the house, it'll make it even better. The cabin thing is not happening. That's the dream crusher. That's not happening. Not right now. I mean, if you like, do you have some very old auntie who's rich and going to leave you money? No. Um, do you guys have uh, your wills and your powers of attorney and your healthcare proxies done? No, well, I think we have the wills done, but not the power of attorney stuff done. That I think is so important. I just, I really can't ex- emphasize to people like this whole idea of like, who's going to make a healthcare decision. It's probably more important than the will in some respects, because like, you know, you got to have someone make, be the decider. And if it's not your spouse, then you better talk to your kids about it. If it's not your kids, Aunt Jill and Uncle Mark would be happy to pull anyone's plug. We we specialize that. Uh, anything else, Joanne? Um, I think I'm good. I'm I'm a little bit wondering about how much to spend. How do I figure that out? I'll tell you what you're going to do. Why don't you track your real expenses for the next, say, 60 days? I mean, I know holidays are coming up, but like your real expenses, like here's what it costs to run our household. These are our utilities. This is what we spend on food. This is, you know, and then, then go back and look at the year and say, how much money did we spend on trips? How much money do we spend on fun stuff? And go look at it. And then you'll find that there's stuff that is like your actual overhead, your monthly nut. And, you know, I'm guessing it's probably more like 4,000 and the extra stuff, the 3,000 or 3,500 is probably the fun stuff. And so if you say, well, you know, we did, we, we did have quite a bit of fun in those first couple of years. That's awesome. Now let's like pull it back. Let's instead of have three trips a year, let's do one trip or two trips, or let's do one trip. That's a wildly fun and expensive one. And one that's not so expensive. And that's how you make your choices. And you'll skinny up that budget. I promise you, you, if you pay attention to it, you will skinny it up. Okay. I will pay attention. That sounds like a, that sounds like pretty basic, good advice. Yeah, exactly. So um, go off and um, start tracking your cash flow. And um, and we thank you very much for joining us today. If you, like Joanne, need a little bit of a look-see at your retirement, your early retirement plan, give us a holler. Go to jillonmoney.com. Click the Contact Us button. Let us know if you'd be willing to come on the air. While you're on the website, subscribe to our free weekly newsletter. And don't forget to pre-order the new book. It's called The Great Money Reset. Yay! It's Friday. Here's some business. Our music is composed by the Parisian based Joel Goodman, Mark. I should tell you that. Uh, Mark Talarisio is our executive producer. We are distributed by Cadence 13. Put your hands metaphorically on someone's back. Grit, growth, grace. Thank you for listening. We'll talk to you tomorrow.